Okay. I guess it is time. Um, give me a second. Because something really cool popped up on my YouTube page today. See if I can access it. Well, not on my page, but on YouTube itself. We are up to 429 subscribers. But I thought we were up higher than that, but maybe not. Um, we have a monthly recap that comes at the end of the month. And so we're going to get into that today. We had 28 videos come out, 21 shorts, 23 live streams. I know that can't be right. There's no way. 19 posts. Um, let's see. Uh, we had record views this month. As far as you guys viewing stuff. We had 15.1 thousand people watched my channel this month. That is 56% more than usual. It is our highest in, let's see, in five and six months. So that is something to be proud of, guys. Most of my viewers were new. 82% uh, of you were brand new. Only 18% of you were returning viewers. So I don't know what to say about that. Uh, people, you guys were awesome. We had 108 likes, 105 shares, and 15 comments this month alone and that I believe is the extent of it okay so with that our topic for today is what to plant to attract wildlife now, um, we have already talked about ways to encourage wildlife to visit your yard. If you're new and you haven't seen that live, it is listed in the playlist marked lives. You can view it there. Some very cool stuff in there. Now, some of these plants are going to be native plants. And some of them are going to be non-natives. So you want to be careful with the non-native plants. Make sure they are not listed as invasive in your area. So let's get into it. So some plants that might attract butterflies into your yard include purple coneflowers. Uh, you can get seeds for those. Pretty common plants. Uh, milkweed, any type of milkweed, basically, a uh, common um, swamp, whatever is in your area, that's what you want to use. Butterfly weed, goldenrod, blazing star, hollyhocks, anise hyssop, lavender. Now, this doesn't mean that they won't be attracted to other plants. And you most certainly, whoops, sorry, you most certainly can fine-tune this list so that you're planting food plants for butterflies in your area. 
And if you want to help monarchs, you definitely can plant that swamp milkweed or common milkweed. For the real pretty swallowtails, and these are the, I think they're prettier than monarchs. Um, you can plant petunias, phlox, again, those are three. Those are two fairly common plants that you can get. Hi, guys. Um, you can add in lilac and bergamot, bergamot, um, just to name a few. For zebra swallowtails, you can plant pawpaw, which is a fruit. Uh, not super common up in our area, but um, if you can find it. For black swallowtail, you can plant carrots, dill, parsley, fennel, or Queen's Anne lace. Now, I'm going to tell you that the caterpillars are going to feed on these plants. So, these are not plants that you're going to have. Hi, guys. I don't know who you are because I can't see your names, but welcome to the live. Um, these are not plants that you're going to have. Um growing to eat uh, these butterflies will get into your stuff and that's sort of the idea behind this uh, for eastern tiger swallowtails if you have tulip tree black cherry or sweet bay mag magnolia growing in your yard uh, you're going to get those caterpillars feeding on those plants now the black cherry is going to feed more than just butterflies. But, um, yeah, that that's a different story there. Um, next, Spice Bush Caterpillar is a very, very cool caterpillar. It looks a little bit like a snake. They have eye spots on them. Really cool looking thing. Uh, they feed on Sweet Bay. Spice bush, which is an incredible shrub. Sassafras, which is another really cool tree. Wow, 10 people. Hi, guys. I can't see everybody. I don't know why that is. Okay. Um, another thing that you can try growing is... Um, Oh, tulip tree, again, is another plant that this caterpillar will grow on. Now, Virginia creeper, now this is an iffy one um, because some people do have allergies to it. But it has a really incredible uh, red fall colors on it. It also makes a beautiful addition to a yard. If you, if you plant it in the right spot. And it is a food plant for the Pandorus a Sphinx Moth, which has a bright orange caterpillar. Another moth. Oh, that's a bummer. We get them every once in a while, and I am going to be talking about some plants that you can plant um, for hummingbirds here in a second. Um, so another large moth, and it's actually one of the larger moths that we have here in the United States. Um, you can try planting, um, you can try having oaks, cherry, um, black cherry again comes into play, beech trees, Apples and button bush, which is usually around here. I think a button bush is growing where it's wet. Um, but a, a good size cecropia moth will be bigger than my hand. And those of you that know me in real life, you know how big my hand is. It's pretty small, but these butterfly, these moths are huge, um, and they're real pretty. So those are just a few of the butterflies that. I've mentioned, and there's a lot of other plants that you can plant. Um, if you know of a certain butterfly, 
or you have a plant in your yard and you want to know if butterflies will feed on it or if the caterpillars will feed on it, let me know. Now for hummingbirds. Um, there are plants that you can get that butterflies are going to love. Uh, some of those include cardinal flowers, columbine, which if you can get your hands on eastern columbine, that's great. Uh, really beautiful flowers. Same with the cardinal flower. Trumpet honeysuckle. Uh, you do need to check. Again, some of these plants could be on the invasive list. Um, some of them may not be. Check with your state on that. Uh, milkweeds. Milkweeds are great plants to have. They have a beautiful, fragrant flower. Um, most people don't think of that, but they do. That's going to go great for monarch butterflies as well as a host of other stuff. You can try lupins. Lupines uh, will attract, also attract butterflies. A few more flowers you can try include bee balm, uh, garden phlox, lance leaf coreopsis, Virginia creeper, wild plum, if you can find it, witch hazel, anise hyssop. Um, if you've seen my, it used to be my trailer for the, um, for the channel. It is loaded. It is always loaded with butterflies and an amazing variety of, um, bees. Blue lobelia, buttonbush, again, coral honeysuckle. Fire pinks. Um, hummingbirds. Foxglove. Jewelweed. Um, Blazing Star you might be able to find for seed if you go to the right place. Um, Scarlet Sage. Wild Bergmint again. Um, some of these plants might be a little bit aggressive as far as seeding or self-seeding. But these are great plants for um, hummingbirds. Remember, before you plant any plants, again, check with your state's Fish and Wildlife or DNR to see if the plants you want, you want to plant are not considered invasive. And usually if a plant is invasive, your state, your local shops cannot sell them. Uh, fruit trees. Great plants to plant uh, if you have the room for different types of birds and or butterflies coming in to feed on those flowers. So blackberries, raspberries, American persimmon, if you can find it, service berries, American beauty berry, hollies, staghorn sumac, which has the added benefit of having Really beautiful fall colors on it. Hackberry, mountain ash, hawthorn, viburnum. But make sure that, again, they're natives. Natives are best if you can get your hands on them. Uh, you can also try planting choke cherries, wild black cherry. Again, black cherry we talked about being good for some of our butterflies. Uh, Tulupa, again. Tulupa has a really beautiful fall colors, but it's a bit of a rarity. Um, elderberry um, and grasses all will help wildlife. Spice bush, red choke cherry, sunflowers, oaks, pine trees, any of the wild cherries and coneflowers all make wonderful addition to your yard. Now, again, the idea here is to bring in the wildlife. The fruit trees, really important food source for some birds. Uh, robins, North American robins, believe it or not, even though we see them in the spring going after worms, as adults, they are fruit eaters. So they really do depend on wild plants and some domestic plants to get their fruits. And you will see other birds getting into there too. Cedar waxwings will do that. 
Uh, you could plant wild grapes or you could get uh, a grapevine yourself. Just know that birds are most definitely going to get in there and steal some of those grapes. Keep in mind that trees and shrubs that you plant are going to bring in a mix of wildlife. They're going to provide shelter for birds to nest. Uh, whatever you plant will depend upon your area and the conditions in your yard. So that's the other thing is some plants just are not cut out to grow in the shade. So know, know the conditions in your yard and then figure out what you can get your hands on. Um, be really careful. Just FYI, when you go out to the store and you buy a butterfly mix and you think you're getting native plants, some of them may not be native plants. Uh, for those of you that are local, I might have some purple coneflower flower or purple coneflower seeds still left on my plants. Uh, I think they're seeds anyway. I might be able to give you a couple to see if they come up or maybe five, whatever I have. Um, and they will do pretty good in the shade. They do, the colors do fade the longer that the flowers are out. So, do you have questions or comments? I went through that information fairly fast. So, if you do have questions or comments, let me know. And also, I want to add that just putting out these plants doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have visitors. It just ups your chances. You might also get, and I don't know if they visit, um, what am I thinking of? Morning Glory. I don't know if hummingbirds will visit those plants or not, but uh, it's worth a try. So any questions about what I've covered? Also, some of the plants that I covered also are edible for people. Hummingbirds, by the way, on the eastern United States, we only have one variety, and that is the ruby-throated. As you go west, you do encounter more species. And again, what you're going to grow on the eastern United States is different than what you might grow in the western United States. So also keep that in mind. We see hummingbirds every once in a while here. Not 100% sure what they're feeding on, but I know they were definitely feeding on our columbine. So that was pretty cool to see. But having these plants in your yard definitely helps. And like I've mentioned in other videos and other lives, having plants in your yard that are native, 100% better than having plants in your yard that are not native. Um, That is for hummingbirds, but some of these plants that I've mentioned will also work for butterflies like i think the hyssop that i mentioned anise hyssop you're gonna get butterflies coming in and feeding on them and you're also going to get other animals coming in feeding them but anytime that you are putting stuff out for the for the purpose of pollinators Variety is better than just one type of flower. You want to go for multiples, not the same flower, but different plants that flower. And at different times, too. So like my, my area, we start in the spring with some of our uh, domestic plants like tulips and daffodils coming up. And some crocus that come up. And then 
we get into some of our other flowering plants. And then to end the summer, we get coneflowers. So the idea is, is to have something that is constantly in bloom and or fruiting to provide food. And, and don't be surprised when you plant something if animals don't get into it. Other animals. Like I said, um, if you can get your hands on parsley, that is actually food for one of our native butterflies. And the caterpillars will feed on it. Just if you're if you're going to grow parsley, just know that there are butterflies that like it too, and they will feed on. That's okay. Depending upon how things go, I might be ending a little bit early myself. Ooh, four votes on the. Um, that's very cool. If you are interested and you want to know more on this topic, you can leave them in the comments or you can put it in the chat. I don't have my butterfly book in front of me, but there's a lot of different plants out there that you can tune your um your garden into or try finding there are even companies out there who specialize in native plants That you can order from as well. And if you're going for uh, a decorative plant, um, some of the wildflowers are also um, pretty ornamentalish. Like I think the the columbines. Beautiful plants. I don't know if any butterflies really visit the um, iris plants, but there are native irises. Mm. Hey. Sorry. I'm going to check on our poll. Oh, cool. Yes. 25% say yes. 75% say no. If you do have a yard, um, it's not too hard to get plants that the butterflies will at least um, visit. A little bit harder sometimes to get... Uh, Plants that they will host on. And by host, I mean lay their eggs on. Um, unfortunately, dear, I will do maybe a, a video on stuff you can plant to keep deer away. Let's see. But if you're if you're going to attract deer, I would say don't don't be a city person and bring deer into your yard. Deer can be destructive. Uh monarchs do. 
Not all butterflies, but monarchs do. Uh, things you can put in to keep deer away. Uh, you can fly. The, you can fly. You can try oregano, marigolds, iris, foxglove, daffodils, chives, bleeding heart, bee balm, Russian sage. Again, make sure you are um, checking to make sure that these plants are not invasive in your area. Lavender, rosemary, oregano, thyme, garlic. Strong smelling herbs are going to help keep them away. They also don't like fuzzy or hairy stuff. So different, different plants like that help. Um... Globe thistle... Yeah. You can also try um, putting in plants that you know that deer like away from your garden. And they will go for those maybe first. So strawberries, peaches, pansies, impatience, stuff like that. Don't plant those by your garden. If that helps. Wow, we lost like a ton of people. Can't can't nip. Hello? Again, it, it depends. <coughs> if, if you haven't seen them in your yard, I maybe wouldn't worry about it. Did I? I don't know if I did. Darn it. Let's see.
I didn't. I did. Wow. Okay, so next live, we are talking about coyotes and other critters that are adapted to live in cities. So some of that is going to be how you can live with these animals and as well as how to keep them away, maybe. Yeah, coyotes in Chicago, coyotes in Lake Station, coyotes in Gary, they're everywhere. If there's a food source that they can get their hands on, they're going to be everywhere. I need a mascot. Maybe an ohm. Not in not entirely prairie. Not everything was prairie. There were prairies around. But there was also a lot of swampland. No, there, there's quite a bit of lowland areas that would have been swamp. But yeah, I mean, there's, <coughs> there are prairie-ish areas. But this this was not what I would call there might have been areas that had prairie plants. But like the Great Plains, this is this is not Great Plains. But I, I'm proud of the areas that we do have. We lost a lot of native land. A lot of native vegetation. I need to start wearing my other glasses when I do lives. Just saying. Hello. I was going to turn this into a Q&A. Welcome, welcome. Beyond that, I haven't figured out my lives for the rest of the week.
Um, nom, nom, nom. I want to see something. So, this is what I'm going for. Um, Tuesday, of course, we're doing whatever it is that I said we were doing. The Coyotes and Other Critters Adapted to Live in Cities. Friday's Live is going to be pets and plants that are poisonous to them. And Saturday, depending upon if or when, uh, we will be doing a Q&A. But I might even do that Tuesday. The following Tuesday. Sorry, I'm looking something up. Because I want to see... I'm trying to find out...
I can't find what I was looking for. So anyway, guys, I'm going to sign off and talk to you later. Have a great week. Hope you're enjoying your, your day, whatever you're doing. Looks like we're ending. Looks like our, our poll. Do you have any plants for hummingbirds or butterflies in your yard? 25% of you said yes. 75% of you said no.